Hey y'all, out at uh, Steve Holcomb Pro Auto Custom Interiors and a lot of you requested to uh, do a video on how they make those consoles that they put in the car and um, I'm interested in it too because I think that's one of the focal points of his interiors is uh, I think the consoles, the way they kind of waterfall through there and run all the way to the back is awful cool. So uh, today I'm going to have, actually it's going to take a couple of days, but uh, over the next couple of days I'm going to shoot the process of uh, how Tim, that's his cousin, that's his partner in this business, he usually does the work on them, how he makes one of those consoles and kind of give you an idea of what goes into uh, to making that part of the interior. So let me go inside, we'll get this thing set up and started. Tim, how are you, brother? Good morning, Scotty. <laughs> Tell me what you're doing. We're making a console for this 68 Firebird. This okay. is my pattern. That's what you start with, is a piece of cardboard yeah. as a pattern? Yeah, we start us a pattern out. We start getting an idea of our angles and get it all lined up to where it's going to match up with the dash. And this one, we eliminated the uh, wood grain, the factory radio, because it's going to have a remote commander unit with we'll mount inside the console. Eliminated all that. We may put those gauges right here. French those back in there. Yeah, uh, yeah, because it's going. The, the head unit's in the in the back, so all he needs is the small remote. So okay. And we'll put it in hiding inside here. Keeps it all clean looking. Okay. We'll get our angle on right here for our console. Make make the make us a pattern. It'll have a big sliding door. We'll put a track in here. Make a a lid for it and put cup holders in here and a 12 volt outlet and some courtesy lights in the side. Okay. Whatever else. You don't make it out of cardboard. You you transfer this over to something else. This will be out of PVC. Okay. Uh, sheet. We'll cut that out and uh, start screwing it all together with some blocks. Get the proper spacing so the door will slide nice and smooth. Right. And. Uh, Whatever else he can think of, we can put in here. Is it kind of a process that you, you you pretty much know what you're doing, or as you're working through it, you start making some adjustments and, and massaging it a little bit? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a little of both. A little of both. People ask what we're, how we're going to do this one. We don't know until we start getting there and start whittling. Right. So you so you start out. You know you want to make a console run from the front to the back. You make your pattern, and then after that, once you start setting things in there, you may make some fine tuning to that. Yeah. Uh, some of our uh, some of our best works you come from a mistake or something and right. try to cover that up it's like wow well, i'm glad that went like that so right that's one thing about custom you can figure it out as you go and make it it usually turns out better all right well cool i mean that's uh that's neat to see that y'all start with a piece of cardboard several pieces of cardboard actually you tape together yep you just crawl in here and start gluing sheets together and Start whittling and... Now is this console going to run up through the seat in the back or just through yeah, the seats in the middle? We'll have a separate piece that will come down between the two seats so it look like buckets. Okay. And that, I have made them all in one piece console but it's a whole lot easier on a convertible. Right. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> on this and you have to make it in pieces where you can get it in and out. So. I got gotcha. you. All right. Well, cool. How long does it usually take to make one of these? Mm, about three days usually. How many hours though? You're not working on it for three uh, days straight, are you? 20, 25 hours. So. Holy smokes. Just for the console. I've spent two weeks on it. Really? Every day making some really crazy console. Flip down with DVD screens in it. And yeah. Actually, it was another Camaro, uh, same body style, 68 Camaro. Cool. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. All right, well, we'll follow the process through. What's next now? You're going to transfer this over onto that PVC? Yep, it's going to be cut out of PVC, and then we'll start uh, cut, uh, cut some blocks to two by two blocks and cut those together and screw it all together and then we'll make sides for it okay it's easy to make one but you got to remember you got to cover it too right, so you got to figure you. out how it's going to hide all your edges of your leather and so you got to be thinking a couple steps ahead as you're making oh, it yeah. too yeah. yeah we've done a few of them so we know what not to do that's right all right cool well we'll check back in with you and see how it's going well i hope so all right brother thanks thank you what are you doing now there tim boom we made that cardboard turn into plastic that's cool. All right, so you just laid those cardboard pieces on there, cut them out of this, uh, what's that stuff called? PVC foam sheet. All right, and now what are you doing? You're putting braces in there? We, uh, well, I had to router these edges over on the be bevel the bottom edge for the, match the contour of the, the transmission hump. Rounded the tops over, and then we cut these uh, two by, uh, yeah, two by, and then screw those in, adjust them where we think it's gonna be 
linear all, and parallel all the way so the door will slide easily. So these, these blocks here have to all be the exact same length. So you got to keep everything square, obviously, because it gets wider and narrower that, yeah. that, uh, that door will jam up or get floppy. It just doesn't slide smoothly. And we, uh, we'll put those in. Then we'll get wider just to match in with this dash insert here. So the door, the door will come back from about right in here and slide back. And we'll cut the will that be storage down in there then? Yeah, you can try to put at least where you can put a Ruger Super Blackhawk. Okay, yeah, that's a good concealed place, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, keep that uh, functional. Maybe a couple extra hiding spots. Right, right. And uh, try to get it to where it'll all actually come back out so I can cover it. All right, so it's not mounted in there. You're gonna, you're doing. You're putting these braces in while they're in the car so that you can get an exact fit to the car. Custom fit, tailored to the floor, and then it'll slide out like such. And then what will you do, cover it in leather? <laughs> yeah, then the, the, the prettification process. Okay. And we start stretching some hide on it. So. All right, well, cool. We'll check back with you when you're ready to do that then. All right. All right. Tim, how are you, brother? I'm all right, how are you? Not too bad. How's that console coming? Well. It's what four days later, so we're still. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now to be fair, you yeah. you've been waiting on leather for a day. Yeah, we, well, we're still waiting on leather. We had we finished up the seat, so we had enough to where I could start cutting out some through the side. I still don't have for the centerpiece, but I still got to do this insert. I got enough for the door and the dash piece. I got that covered a little while ago. So, so once you get once you get it put together, then you put another piece. What's this black stuff you put on here? This is uh, the eighth inch. PVC sheet. I put it on there to give it this little sculpting line right here, and mainly to cover the screws for the little block, so it keeps that all smooth. Right. So I get. Purpose. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but there'd be no reason you'd have to get in there and adjust those braces or anything like that after this point. No, that's done. Yeah. Once that gets glued on, you better hope you had it right. Yeah, that's right. And then this here, you'll dress that up. I'll get the top piece here put on. And then you've sprayed it with glue. What kind of glue do you use? Vinyl top adhesive. Okay. Put it on there and let it tack up real good. This took a while to get it all exactly fitting. So something like that. Oh, all right, cool. And our lid will go in somewhere there on the tracks. It's starting to look like something. Yeah, there. no, it looks like it's, now he's got to cover it. What's this big hole going to be for up here? That's the shifter boot. Oh, okay. So, and then here's our radio control. All right. Sony remote. Cool. That'll go in there. We still got a pretty good bit of room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can lay a pistol in there. Yeah, some type. Right. Or a couple of. A little 380 or something like that. So, I got our gauges in there. Got our holes for the lights when they come in. Right. Waiting on shipping on everything. Right, right. That's the thing about it. You can only work as fast as the parts get here, right? Yep. I've got. I've got the leather cut out. As soon as leather gets, or the blue starts tacking up, I'll start covering some of it. It's all going to be the dark blue. Dark blue. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Well, I'll stick around and watch you apply some of that leather. Leather, if you don't mind. When it gets tacked up, we will. All right, brother. That turned out nice. Voila! So you put one piece of leather, and then you come, uh, you come around here with a tool and uh, tuck and tool and tuck and tool. Tucked it in like such. I got gotcha. you. And that hides all our screw heads here, and then. Gives us this little, that's this beautiful, detail. man. No, oh, that's beautiful. That looks cool. That's you one never side. get. Yeah, let's let's watch you do the other that's side. One side, you let it tack up enough. Hopefully. Yeah, that's the thing too with the glue. You gotta let you you spray it on, then you let it tack up. So you can't do it like when it's wet. That's how you learn early on to let that stuff tack up. You make a mess of it. Of course, it's raining good, so humidity's up, so it takes a little longer. You get it positioned. Get it something like such. We're gonna have enough to have just enough leather to get these two sides. All this stuff is hand cut. So it's not like he lays it out and you see them laser machines get <laughs> all the pieces out of one hide the best they can. Yeah, no folks, that ain't how it works around here. Yeah, we don't have a nesting machine. Is that what it's called? Well, I don't I try to have other programs to nest it. We just have to do the old eyeball method. Yeah, it goes in there like so. so. If you let it tack up, you can pull it back up and work it. If it's not tacked, it'll be a gummy mess. 
Oh, I see what you're it's saying. Just, it's just sticky enough. You can stick it and it'll stay, but you can still work it. And how long does it take to dry before it's before it's good forever? Uh, a few hours. It'll be. Yeah, in the morning. Yeah, well, the bond increases with age, it says on there. So oh, okay. It, if it sits on there a week or so, you can't hardly pull that stuff off. I got the backing will come with it. Yeah, I know. I, I've helped do that before. Of course, this is the trickier part, getting it worked down in this curve so I can get it around here like this on this so inside. So you've got to cut little notches or something. Yeah, to relief around. cuts. And start oh, feeding it back in. See all that technical terms he's using? Relief cuts? Relief cuts, yeah, that's it. Tim's trying to embarrass me. He makes me sound like an idiot. I'm talking about little notches. Yeah, called notches. relief cuts. Well, everybody knows something you don't. Pay attention, right? Really? Yeah. I don't know anything about your technical editing. Well, I don't know anything about you. you ever I, seen I, don't, I don't know how to do Photoshop. <laughs> you ever seen my videos? I don't know nothing either. <laughs> People would tell you. I get told every day. As long as you get the views, right? Yeah, well, you know, as long as there's some people out there. More people appreciate it than don't, so that's what i got to go with. There you go. Yeah. I'm surprised we make as many happy people, people happy as we do. I don't. Y'all are real craftsmen. Well, you, you do that much stuff for that many different type of people. You're right. You would think that there'd be plenty of them that didn't think that was, uh, they weren't happy, but pretty much they're all happy. A lot more than I thought would make happy. Of course, some of them act happy when they're in here. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find out real quick when people go to shows and talk about you whether they really like you or not. Yeah, that's what I told Griffey. I said the worst is when they just come pick their hot rod up and you don't ever hear from them again, right? Well, we've had some like that. We didn't know if they liked us or not, and then they kept bringing cars. And that's what tells you they like you is when they can bring another one. Bringing cars and bringing friends with cars, so I guess that's a good sign. You can't always read them. So... Something like that. You just hope you don't cut too deep. It's easy, easier to cut a little deeper if you need it. You can heat it up and it helps it stretch a little bit more. It's amazing as you're able to pull on that like you are and it still keeps that crease in it that you got on the other piece. Yeah, that's why, that's why I put a lot of glue in there and let it tack up good. Of course, you factor in these shapes when you're making it so you don't get too sharp of a curve and right. paint yourself into a corner. I got you. You don't come up with something that's impossible to cover. Yeah. Just cut a little more. Of course, there's always a way to fix it. It's just something. It's not how good you are. It's how good you fix your mistakes, right? That's right. How well you hide them. Like I said the other day, some of our best work has been hiding mistakes. An eighth inch too deep cut or all stretched on and flaw and the leather will be right there. That's the worst thing. A lot of times you don't see it. You lay it on the table, you look it all over and until you get it stretched on, you don't know anything. As you stretch it, them flaws come yeah. more prevalent. It pulls yeah. it out. Kind of shows up bad then. So especially on a door panel or something right there, right in your face, on top of the door or something. Can't have that. So. Dash pad right there yep. in front of right over the gauges where you're looking out over the window. You really learn to watch for them in. Of course, the leather companies just say that's natural beauty. That's right. It's not a flaw, it's natural beauty. Yeah. This one looks like it's gonna go. It helps having good leather. It stretches. It's really hot. That's another reason you let it tack good. Give it time to bond to that plastic so it don't lift back up. If you do it too soon, it'll pull your leather back up and you just, your leather have glue wadded up on it and it just makes a mess. You learn the hard way. Yeah. You've been doing this how long? Uh, it's 20 years or so. Wow. You learn what not to do, especially when you're buying expensive leather. Yeah. How much are one of those skins, you know? I mean, I guess it depends, uh, I guess, but what's the price on range? 250 to 1500 Really? So, I mean, it's just... Depends on what kind Depends of finish on. and this and that. It's yeah, I mean, yeah. of course, the nicer or the more expensive hides have fewer flaws, so it's, right. you get to use more. Do they grade them or something? Yeah, of course. You can you can work with the cheaper ones. You just got to work around the flaws. But if it's something like a big panel that needs no flaws in it, then you obviously have to buy one that doesn't have as many flaws. Right. Grab the glue. 
Yeah, I'd have the top of it done if we had the, enough leather to do the insert. It's all right, we'll come back and get it when it's all finished. I can go ahead and bolt it in the car so they get our lights come in, wire that up. Now I can set this in, this center piece will just be removable. So oh, okay. We can put it in after the fact. Of course, I'll leave it like that too, in case you want to get in there and work on any of your wiring, you just pull that center piece out with having the seats and the console and all that. I got you. Makes it a little more functional right. down the road. Right. We try to think of... Think ahead. Think ahead. If I was a car owner having to get back in there and you're in another state... And yeah. Of course, they call up and say, you remember how you did so-and-so? I said, uh, I don't even remember the car, but we've done 50 since then, but I try. Every once in a while, I can remember how I did it. Which is like any other kind of creation. You have a general way of doing it every time, so. Yeah, you're not reinventing the wheel every time you do no, an interior. No, But they're all unique in, in one way or another. Unique. One won't fit, this one won't fit another 68 Firebird. Right. It'd be similar. Right. organized I can find something. And got time for organization. We got cars to do. Alright? It's like me in my kitchen. <laughs> yeah. If I was prepared I could put a good cooking video together. Alright. We got the seats done for it. We're sitting over there waiting. So yeah, let me look at those. Those are nice. They've got to be steamed out and heated and right once you steam them all them wrinkles and everything yeah, will come out. Shrink them on there. That's gonna go good. You did those, no, Dave did those seats, hey? Dave did the seats. He'd be here bragging about them, but he had a birthday party to go to. So he sure. And, that, I got the doors and the, all the inside panels done, the headliner's done. So we're just waiting on leather. You just never know. Sometimes you get it like the next morning, and other times they lose it. And still waiting a week later. But there's still, still plenty of stuff to build. Plenty of cars to work on. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna stand around waiting. I'm still gonna make this, the console that goes up between the back buckets. So I, I'm gonna work on that if I run out of something on this console to do. We've done them a bunch of different ways over the years, but this is the way that seems to be the best bang for the buck as far as strength and speed, putting it together. No, it looks beautiful. I mean, I love these consoles. I think that's one of the things about your interiors I love the most, how those consoles usually run from the front to the back, you know, make buckets in the back. I think that's just cool. Yeah, that's what most people want, it's a super works, is what I call it. Yeah. Every once in a while, somebody wants just a bench in the back, which there's nothing wrong with a bench, especially no. if you're going to be hauling kids or grandkids in it. But yeah, most people say there'll never be anybody in the back seat. So no, especially more than two. No, but you know what? For as much as I wouldn't want to be in the back seat, I want to be in the back seat of your cars because they got those kind of those bucket seats back there. They look comfortable. Well, you can sit. I make these things strong enough. You can sit on the console if, if you needed to. So that's amazing. <laughs> you can pile enough in the back seat. So that's not, it doesn't look good. It's built with quality and solid too oh yeah it's, yeah it's strong right i try to overbuild them because you never know what somebody's gonna be putting them through and it's kind of embarrassing if somebody comes back and said why did this fall apart but not that i've had that happen yet but because you overbuild them <laughs> there you go mm -hmm. well it's a lot of money i try to give some give them something for their money right right on it's what they expect quality not just a good looking product yeah. but a quality product too all it is remembered long after the price is forgotten, right? That's right. I heard that huh? somewhere. Yeah. Fortune cookie or something. Let's write that one down. <laughs> huh? Well, that's the truth. You remember yeah, that's right. piece of junk. People sometimes they get offended. They come and they'll build some type of little console and they'll seem offended whenever we say we're not going to use it. But oh, personal. I've seen those come in here too. Nothing personal, but. Yeah, you got to put your name on it in the end. Well, I'll get out of your way and uh, let you finish working that leather. That's looking good. I'll come back and uh, check it out when you get it done. If I can get some more leather, we'll have it done here, and I'll have it all wired up and lights and all that good stuff. So. Right, and then you're going to do, you've done, here's the lid. 
And then the panel that goes in the middle, you're going to do the same way you're doing this. Yeah, you this, just wrap it in leather. This half piece of leather, I'll take, and, and it'll come and slide right out the bottom. So we can put it in after I get it all covered. I've still got to cover the inside here. And then oh, so you'll cover the inside too? Oh, yeah, I'll cover yeah. all of it. That's, that's okay. somewhere it gets, that takes more time. Oh, than I all would that. think. So yeah, I would think. I've got to wire up this 12 volt outlet and all that, and there's okay. lights. So, but yeah, I'll make that. Of course, that's what I'm saying. You can make a console, but you got to remember to make it coverable. Right. So this piece comes out and drops out the bottom, so it'll move in and out. Right. And, then, and it'll all be the same color then? I'll be leather. This yeah. Thing, yes, I usually try to make that leather on the inside in case they put something, you know, it's right. extra clean and right. cloth or something. So cool. They might lay a candy bar or something there and it mail or something. Right. <laughs> well, brother, I appreciate you letting me come out and get in your way and uh, shoot, you're making a console. So I'm excited to see when it's done and in the car. That's the next time we'll check back with you. Maybe tomorrow. Okie dokie. See you tomorrow then. Thank you. Huh? Hey, y'all. I thought I would uh, put this as the uh, parting shot here on this uh, console video. Uh, Tim got it done. Looks nice, brother. Everything but the lights. Yeah. Still, Still waiting. waiting on those. Still waiting on their wired and ready to go. No, that turned out really nice. I like how you did that. Thank you. And we did it this way so that the seats wouldn't be in and you could see the console it's better. Flowing. Yeah, it flows all the way up. Almost like it was made that way. All the way back to that, uh, what's that called? Some kind of tray? Package tray. Package tray. And Very then big. back around them speakers, too. Very yeah. cool. Steve's about got the seats done. Open that center for me. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it looks good. Can you see? It's hard to see that dark colors. Yeah. No, yeah, it is a little bit. But no, you'll be able to see it. No, it looks good. Got radio remote. Yeah. Cup holders. Yep. Cool. No, you did a nice job. Thank you. Gauge is mounted up there. Yeah. Goes up into the dash. That's the only two he had. So. No, that's cool, man. Worked out good. Good. Well, I'm excited to see it when it's finished. Tim, I sure appreciate you giving me a time to uh, follow you around now. You're certainly welcome. Uh, thank You're you. You're like family. I know that. I appreciate that. Well, folks, there you go. That's how you make a uh, console. At least that's how uh, Pro Auto does it out here. Hope you all have enjoyed it and learned something. Have a good day. See you.